Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how to investigate the relationship between force and extension for a spring. And this is a required practical so it's really important that you learn the details. In the last video we looked at the idea of elastic and inelastic objects. In this video we're going to look at what happens when we apply a force to a spring. So let's start by looking at the equipment. We've got a clamp stand, two bosses and two clamps. We now place a heavy weight on the clamp stand to stop it falling over. Next we attach a metre rule and a spring. The top of the spring must be at the zero point on the metre rule. It's really important that the metre rule is vertical, otherwise the readings will be inaccurate. The bottom of the spring has a wooden splint attached as a pointer, and this pointer must be horizontal or again the readings will be inaccurate. We now read the position of this pointer on the metre rule. This is the unstretched length of the spring, in other words the length with no force attached. Next we hang a 1 newton weight on the spring like this. We now read the new position of the pointer on the metre rule. Next we continue adding 1 newton weight to the spring and reading the position of the pointer. I'm showing you a close up now of the metre rule. We now need to work out the extension produced by adding each weight. To do that we subtract the length of the unstretched spring from each reading. So the extension produced by the 1 newton weight is 4 centimetres and the extension produced by the 2 newton weight is 8 centimetres. The extension produced by the 3 newton weight is 12 centimetres and the extension produced by the 4 newton weight is 16 centimetres. We now need to plot the extension against the weight and we end up with a graph like this. Now in the required practical you're meant to use the spring to work out the weight of a mystery object, for example a stone. To do that we need to measure the extension of the spring when the stone is hanging from it. We then read the weight of the stone from the graph like this. Now there are several points about this graph that you need to understand. Firstly the graph is a straight line going through the origin, in other words through zero. This tells us that the extension is directly proportional to the weight. Scientists say that there is a linear relationship between force and extension and that's because we get a straight line graph. The word linear means straight line. This shows the same experiment but using a rubber band. As you can see in the case of a rubber band we do not get a straight line. This is called a non-linear relationship. Going back to the graph for the spring we can see that the spring is elastic. That's because if we remove the weight the extension returns to zero. Now there is a problem here. If we add too much weight to the spring then we get a graph that looks like this. As you can see the graph is now non-linear. In this case we've overstretched the spring. In other words if we took all the weight away the spring would still show an extension. Scientists call this inelastic deformation. By overstretching the spring we've exceeded the limit of proportionality and we can see that on the graph. There is one final idea that we need to look at. In the last video we looked at how to calculate the force required to extend the spring we used this equation. The force equals the spring constant multiplied by the extension. We can use the linear part of the graph to determine the spring constant. At any point the spring constant is found by dividing the force by the extension. And remember that the spring constant will be the same for any part of the graph as long as we don't exceed the limit of proportionality. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on this required practical in my revision workbook. And you can get that by clicking on the link above.